that's the intro for Ken Boots Without Love, which is the first commercial recording that I had played on at Studio One. That, that song wasn't really a popular song for Ken. It was covered by Leroy Smart, who made the hit with that song in the 70s. Go, 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 go. <laughs> In the 70s, he, he's the one who popularized the song because I said the Ken Boot version didn't have proper promotion, but it was a very good song. So that was the very first commercial recording that I had played. <laughs> Beres Hammond, um, somebody I would have recorded with previously before One Dance. This was now in the age of the drum machine. You know, we're getting away from the traditional drum set and um, we're now using electronic keyboards. We're using electronic drums. The bass is now played by a keyboard. and. My good friend and great producer Willie Lindo was at the time working. He had always been working with, with Beres, not necessarily that I was involved, but all of those um, One Step and those popular songs, himself and Harold Butler were the, the main people behind those productions. But um, Beres now started to venture more into the reggae music. But regards to One Dance, Willie Linda was very reluctant to use a drum machine because he didn't think it was, you know, worthy of, you know, his type of um, concept. But a lot of songs were being produced and involve electronic um, equipment and uh, somehow he decided he was going to give it a chance. Sly Dunbar had given him a, a drum track which was on tape and he said, well, I'm going to use it now. So he wrote one dance for Barry. So this is the first song that I, from my memories that Willie Linda is going to use, use a drum machine as one of his, his productions and he wrote the song. So he called me in, the drum track was already on tape and um, came in with my synthesizers. So I'm going to be using the synthesizer to play the bass and synthesizer to play the rhythm parts. So I will probably try to find a bass sound that is probably close enough. Um, which the bass line is. So that's pretty much where that rhythm track started. And, um, you know, not, nothing much more in the song apart from probably a guitar and the pianos playing there. Mm. And that was all arrangement for the song. But the song became a hit and Willie decided that he was going to write a follow-up to that song. And a lot of people probably may not recognize, but She Loves Me Now is a continuation of the story for one dance. Because, you know, here's Bercy, he goes to a dance and he sees somebody and he apparently is 
you know, favoring that person. And so the, the next song pretty much tells you what became after that one dance, you know. So, he, so Willie said, well, we're going to use what, the same concept, same drum machine sound just that this time. I was asked to do the programming, which was the identical drum pattern that Sly had presented before. And so Willie wrote another song. I'm quite sure the key, but it. So the song pretty much is um, She Loves Me Now. So he met a girl, you know, and that is because of one dance. So, you know, and needless to say, those two songs go hand in hand. And, um, both are hit songs. All right, when um, Morgan Heritage is um, down by the river, hit the scene, I did not know it was going to be down by the river because I was called for a session by Dean Fraser, who was um, producing some tracks, I think for the time, at that time with VP Records. And he had a particular rhythm track that he needed to redo. He just made one slight adjustment to you know, the timing, you know, of, of a very minimal thing that a lot of people would not notice it. So we did that, um, we did that track. And um, the introduction, which some people will know, if I can find the sound, <laughs> you know, is, uh, uh, okay, here to, uh, all right, that's the introduction, which is a from a very popular song by the Cables called um, "What Kind of World." <laughs> I had to literally sing sing the song in my, which is done at Studio One with Jackie. That's a Jackie two created introduction from Studio One, but Dean said I needed to do over that rhythm. It created some problems after because. When 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 this when they started releasing various songs on that rhythm, inclusive of Morgan Heritage, was the first single that was released on that rhythm, down by the river. Freddie McGregor and you know other uh, other artists. Um, Sanchez had had different melodies on that rhythm, and it created a problem because um, Mr. Dodd at the time th think that the rhythm was sampled. His original recording was sampled, and he put a stop order, I think, on the production and the release of of thing. But um, you know, but we had actually replayed it. So as I'm saying, um, at the time when we, we made that rhythm track, it was just creating a rhythm track for, 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 for use by the whoever needed to do it. And that is how it, uh, Morgan Heritage and myself became associated. You know, I've never really worked with them other than that. Just, they, you know, they just came and did their song on that rhythm track. Right, you'll recognize that all it's not the right instrument playing the instrument that is um Taurus Riley's She's Royal, which is as fresh you now today as it has ever been from the date when it uh, when it hit the, the airwaves and thing. You know his again Dean Fraser, the producer. Um I've done so many sessions that sometimes when you're asked to come in and just play over a rhythm track. You don't necessarily remember if the singer was even there at the time, but maybe the intention was for a particular singer or singers to work on a track. So this is another session that, that um, Dean Fraser was in charge of, and the, the idea of She's Royal's rhythm arrangement was taken from um, a Delroy Wilson song. Can't quite remember the name of the song, but the, the whole idea of, of She's Royal arrangement was taken from a Delroy song. So 
there was no significance to it at the time because we just laid down a track because you know the producer wanted us to play that track you know the bass player played the line and everything sounded great and same thing when you finish you go home and um then here comes this big hit song she's royal which at the time i didn't even remember i played on it but it's, it's dean keep reminding me say yeah man are you play upon them tune them man because i remember when the bridge come to take place they play the sustain organ the summer and you know when she's royal she's royal i want it my lad i play him say no man i want the organ sustain there so that is why i say okay if you say so so you know but you know sometimes there are so many things that you do and you know, you don't identify it with any particular singer, you know, it, it kind of just comes and it goes. So. Wild World by Maxi Priest was done in 19, I think, 87 when Maxi came to Jamaica to record. I had not known about Maxi before, but I subsequently was given a copy of his um, previous album done in England by his then producer, Erskine Thompson. Erskine came with Maxi to Jamaica because they wanted to have a Jamaican experience using top musicians, top producers, mainly Sly, Robbie and Willie Lindo. At the time I was doing a lot of work with both, you know, both sets of, of producers. So it was kind of almost a given that they would ask me to come and, and be involved. Um, the production kind of got off to us slow that because um, Willie and Sly and Robbie were off the island when Maxi came and he was getting a little bit anxious and um, so when we finally got into the studio, you know, there were songs that, you know, Maxi came with and he wanted to do this song. And it was his producer who suggested that he do Wild World, which is a cover song, which was already a hit by Cat Stevens. And, and then even Jimmy Cliff had a fairly good um, bit of success with it. And Maxi was a bit reluctant. Hey, he's in my ears about this song, Wild World. Cat Stevens song, and he said to me, Max, this song, man, it needs to go like this. You gotta do the song, man. Wicked, 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 wicked. And I'm going, man, I like them tone there. I'm tone, I hate that tone, man, I like them tone there. I was radical as hell. I ain't doing that song. I hated the song. And it wasn't until I went, flew all the way to Jamaica, and Slam Robbie them played the track and was there going, hey kid, sing the tune. But um, we went into the studio and we said, we know, we're going to do the song. And uh, which was... <laughs> That's the intro which I played with uh, a kind of marimba type of sound. Yeah. Which is a signature type of sound, you know, it's one of the most popular songs that I have played on. And that album and that song, that was the first single from the Maxi album recorded in Jamaica. And it became a humongous hit and re pretty much relaunched his career or launched it in certain places that it was Maxi was pretty much unknown because I don't think too many people knew of Maxi before but this particular song kind of brought him to a, to a totally different audience including pretty much most of Jamaica and there are other songs you know that became very popular and then after that he got into stuff with Shaba and you know you know you know those things but but um, the, the Wild World was the one that pretty much started the whole ball rolling for Maxi globally. Well, let me hear you say, Mom. 